we have reached back all the way into the 70s to try to unlock the whole inflation uh, conundrum that we have by turning to Dr. RSI, who is going to diagnose the commodity markets today. And Dr. RSI was around in the 70s and has the experience of having gone through this before. Well, Dr. RSI is our special guest, Andrew Cardwell. Andrew. Bruce, welcome. how are you? <laughs> I'm great. You say so, reach back. Yes, I am a dinosaur. Oh, I know. You and me both. Yeah, I was, so I was uh, what, 1978 when I started. I was 24. Ouch. Yeah. Yeah, I, I was... It, I was in I was in a different business in 1978, but one that was very uh, sensitive to inflation pressures. Yeah, and I figured you were just coming out of high school and entering college. Like yeah, I, no, I meet some of my no, students in my coursework. You know, I said, do, you, they, do you remember 78 <laughs> through 80? And they said I wasn't born until 86. I said, well, excuse me, there, no, mama boy. <laughs> no, I I was well down the path by. 1978. The 70s inflation was, uh, all I can say is it was incredible, remarkable. It and was fun. I went, I remember going to, uh, opening up my first um, uh, money market account, which I was able to open up near my work. And I went in, uh, opened this account. And I think that the interest rate that I got was like 15%, 16% mm -hmm. for money market balances. And yeah. uh, so that was all a function of the incredible uh, ever increasing inflation rate that we had. And uh, it was just a, a remarkable time. So anyway, we're uh, going to uh, have uh, Andrew, who has been a guest here in the past, talk to us about the uh, pressures of inflation through the commodity markets and how we can use the RSI, Cardwell RSI Edge to be able to help us understand these pressures and influences as they show up in the commodity markets. And uh, while we're at it here, you can see Andrew's contact information on this screen. You can learn more. Uh, many of you are gonna be interested in his courses, which are phenomenal. And uh, his whole approach to RSI, which is unique in the world, is how he has uh, approached RSI and it's a great trading tool. Many people in the world trade using the Cardwell RSI Edge. Let and me so, excuse excuse course, me for one yeah. sec. Look up there at the top, and you see Cardwell RSIs, and you see that pattern that I drew. You see it. It's like a bearish divergence. It sells off and then it explodes through that trend line. I'm seeing a lot of the markets, commodities especially, and I've told my clients this year and probably through next year is going to be a good commodity year. And we've got many of the markets, and I want to go through some of them, uh, the grains, the coffee, the sugar, the hogs, cotton. If you've seen what crude oil's done, I wouldn't be surprised to see crude oil break 70. These markets have bottomed from the highs that were made back in 2011. And I'm drawing these lines on a lot of my charts and I still keep some of my charts by hand. Those first 10 years, I didn't even have a computer, calculated it on a spreadsheet, plotted it on graph paper. Well, it shows you can tell, you. Yeah. You can tell you can, that the doctor is in the house. And, oh, he's in, uh, he's in the house. And we're gonna, we're gonna have the doctor explain things. Now, what I'm gonna do, because uh, Andrew, in uh, the last couple of episodes of Power Charting, and we talked about this ahead of time, is mm -hmm. uh, I've been uh, documenting the uh, Bitcoin as it's been uh, working its way into a uh, top mm -hmm. and of sorts. It may of not sorts. be the final top, but uh, as you can see here, this is a long-term uptrend. And Andrew is going to uh, show us using the RSI and the Cardwell RSI Edge, how he would interpret this data. So I'm just simply going to update very briefly this information because I know many of you have been following this uh, remarkable upward trend. You can see the channel 
that has been taking place. And then of course we have a throw over of the channel, which is an overbought condition. The overbought condition you can see eventually is it was losing steam. Each one of these thrusts is a diminishing thrust from here to here to here to here. And then finally we have a rally of poor quality to a lower high where it just sits on the top of the channel and then it collapsed. Well, look at this remarkable decline down to the 30,000 level, which uh, was from a high of around 64,000. Right. This decline goes right down to what we call in Wyckoff the demand line. And so uh, it went right to it and uh, now it is bouncing. And uh, this uh, data is through, I believe yesterday. Well, so, Bruce, you know, could you, can you also throw up an RSI chart while you had that one up? Underneath uh, it? Let's, uh, let's see if we can do that. So. Is that the same? No, that's sugar. That's when we were talking about sugar. I'd love to see where those channels were. So uh, I don't have the channel okay, on here, that's, but. That's fine. Now. You can see now we'll talk about range rules because everybody uses 70 and 30 and I developed range rules many eons, eons ago of 80 and 40. And you so, can see where it had gotten up to 80. So the, and actually these ranges here uh, were inspired by Andrew on this chart. So 80, yeah, it should be 80, 40 when you're 80, in an uptrend 40. and 60 and 20 when you're in a downtrend. Okay, but I wanted to see your, longer term chart here because those throwovers that you were talking about you saw one got above 80 and then it backed off and then it rallied again you're going to be able to see a longer term yeah it might be too long but no that's fine because one of my new students uh just started with me about a month ago and he said i wish i had met you five or 10 years ago. He said, I went back after studying your coursework and every pullback that held that range of 80 and 40 and was a positive suggested higher prices for years. He said, I wish I had married you 10 years ago. And I said, well, that won't happen. <laughs> We're gonna just stay here with these charts and let the well, charts show you what it's doing. Well, isn't uh, Cardwell RSI edge method really a trend following trend uh, confirming method? To me, it is. Yeah. Uh, people told me when I first started lecturing in public that, you know, RSI just shows overbought or oversold. And I yeah. say, well, I don't even use those words. I said, because of what I do with the range rules is I just shifted it 10 points because people are by nature bullish. And I call it overextended. It's not oversold or overbought on the upside until you get some kind of sell signal. And, and, there, that and therein is the genius of the RSI, Cardwell RSI as a trading system. Right. And, uh, and why it's so unique in the world, because it is more than overbought, oversold. And, and, and recently too here in, the, in 21, if you've seen these rally attempts where you were talking about them, you know, when they were topping the three in a row. If you zoom in on that chart, it'll look like a head and shoulders pattern on the price chart where it had two left shoulders, a head, and then a right shoulder. Now look at the RSI and see how much it was declining, even though prices were going to new highs, it never went back above 70. And there's if it the stays seven. under 60, we're going a lot lower. Fascinating. I, so we actually have been currently at 30, Right. And, and so, um, okay. So let's uh, let's get back to it. And I think uh, it's fallen. Th it's fallen about thirty percent in the last week or so. Oh, incredible! And so this is a chart I put up last week, Andrew. Uh -huh. So I'll just uh, I'll just show this, and then I really want to turn the screen over to you. But this was a count that I had. Uh, this count here was a trading count that went down to 40,000. And in fact, 40, it did pause there. You can't see it in the data here because uh, of it, there was no rally that was meaningful enough or significant enough to reverse the downward 
uh, stride. And so here we are with this count, which goes from the what we call the last point of supply right here to the up thrust. And that is a count that I take with distribution as a, as a rule. And that count went right to 31 to 26. And look where we went, we went right to 30. Mm -hmm. and so we're right into the objective range of this decline. And notice this, that right after we hit that level, we bounced right up into the high 30s. So that is confirmation that this count method uh, worked appropriately, that we had the right uh, counting um, um, uh, system here or the right counting method for the circumstances. And so uh, it's something that Wyckoff is really good at. And uh, here you can see the a little closer view of the decline down to the bottom of the channel there. So well, that uh, and also, excuse me, that line where you have AR through SOW. Yes. On RSI patterns, that's when the RSI will drop. And when it goes through, it becomes what I call BTR, bottom top resistance. What were bottoms before will so become tops. Some, something like that. Yeah. Yeah. And it may only get up to a 60 yeah. on the RSI level, meaning it's down in a bare, bare range. So well, it would not surprise me if it failed. And so All you right. see here how this can support the, R, the Cardwell RSI method because uh -huh. you can see the uh, really the very lackluster rally that just hangs on the top of the channel. And then when it breaks back into the channel, it, it just collapses. And so uh, combining those two methods would be very, very powerful. Oh, and so, as long as you and I have known each other, we've agreed on many things at many times. And some of them not related to the market. Uh -huh. So anyway, so I'm going to leave it at that. We're going to, pause here for a sec and I'm going to turn the screen over to Andrew so that he can do his magic on his charts. His magic. Okay, okay, folks, we're, we're back. back. Yes. But what I had pointed out was those, uh, those highs that Bruce was looking at is up thrust here. And each time it went to that high, our first real bearish divergence was from oh, January of 21 through the end of February. Then he came down to the moving average we, where he was talking about supply line. Those moving averages that are used on bars and RSI are both simple nine and simple uh, exponential 45s. So when these two nines are above, like they were back here, you're in a strong trend. Then you got the range rule shift. And the beauty is when the moving average switches from below 60 to above 60, when it crosses, you're starting initial acceleration. 45 break in 60, you're starting in intermediate to longer term acceleration and you can see it. You can also notice that the 45 period moving average of that RSI stayed above 60. Well, there was a dip in here in the RSI, it came back to the support line on the bar chart Yet this was more overextended here, but the price was greater than here. That's one of my positive reversals. Some people call them positive divergences of, trust me, there's people out there that are trying to teach my work because they saw a one hour video I did with Bruce or somebody else. They don't know it like they think they should because that's one of my Druisms. You don't know what you don't know until you need to know it. And you're still writing them all down, aren't you, Bruce? Uh, I'm writing that one down right now. Okay. So and we let's... started we started picking up these uh, positive, dru positive. druisms that he would that would they'd be they just show up, you know, they just like float out of him. And I'm like, I got to write these down. So yeah, and people tell me you got to really concentrate. You don't want to fall asleep because you'll miss it. Yeah, you don't want to miss a druism. But it was like Yogi. Where Nyogi saying, no, that restaurant, nobody goes in there anymore because it's way too crowded. Yep. Well, people yep. think, oh, when it gets to 70, you just sell it. No, you don't. That's nothing. Yeah. That's I just mean, 98%. Looking at, that, looking at that RSI in there, almost the overbought condition is in and of itself a 
confirmation of a emergence of a good uptrend. Yeah, because that's two of the rules I talked about in the checklist. You know, when you see bearish divergence and these positive reversal patterns, you're in an uptrend. And then the moving averages help confirm it. And where those moving averages are can tell you how strong the trend is. And from these positives, set price objectives. So when it closes above that price objective, it confirms that it's still up. And then you get more of these positives and another divergence and then another positive to take out this divergence. And this is a longer term bearish divergence line when you connect all these highs. Well, you can see that the range started to shift and then the nine moving average went under 60 and the 45 followed it. But while it was follow, they were falling, price was rising to give you another divergence at a lower level, which I refer to as a hidden signal. So when it got up here, markets don't go from a straight high to a low, not in a trend. You're gonna get a well-defined trend with bearish divergences and positive, and you reverse it on the downside. Bullish divergences, everybody rushes in, it goes up and creates a negative and sets a target at a lower low price level and when it does that, you get a bounce and then lower, and it's confirming the trend is still down. Now we've got the nine and the 45 under the 60 and a final up thrust, I guess you guys call it, in Wyckoff. That final up thrust is a lot lower than the momentum high and the first divergence and the second divergence. So the so first sign it, of, sorry, go ahead. so go ahead. the first sign of trouble is when you see those moving averages fall below the 60 level. It's telling me it's got the potential to go a lot lower. It's in the final phases of that up first. Because and, here you are, you're already in the throes of multiple uh, divergences with higher prices. Right, and, and we, and up here, over in here, I had a positive targeting about 67,000. And with the price models I use, some people call them swing points, price points. When I set a positive reversal target and it cannot get above it, and my swing or pivot points for protect uh, potential highs, if it can't get above that, then it's lost a lot of gas. And it can't close over it, so it's not still confirming. Each one of these positives, when it takes that projected target on the, out, on the upside and closes above it, it's confirming. Now here it failed. Jeff Kennedy and I talk about it all the time. The best sell signal is a failed buy signal. So now uh, in this case, you have a, a system or methodology here that uh, establishes the need for patience as you slow the momentum and you build uh, some kind of what we would say in Wyckoff as a distributional top. But right. you're seeing that and you have built in systems in place to enforce uh, a level of patience uh, as you get to the end of distribution and then uh, merge into markdown. Same thing in the re inverse with your accumulation phase. Mm -hmm. And I tell people all the time, markets are a function of price, momentum, time, and sentiment. And this is the one indicator. And believe me, in my 40 years, I've seen Alphabet Soup or Elliott Wave. I've seen, I've seen all the programs. And nothing incorporates as much as the RSI does. Price, momentum, time cycles. This is, this is zero to 100. It's basically a scale for the bullish nature and sentiment of traders. It's so, a momentum and sentiment indicator telling you what it's doing and what the charts are doing. So show us some other uh, markets that are of interest to you right now, because I, I know we're going to run out of time. And, what we, uh, how much time we got there? Uh, we have about nine and a half more minutes. All right, remind me when it's eight. Will do. All right, how do I get this out of the way so I can change the screen here? It's not doing it. Okay, there we go. Um, yeah, I go through, let's look at the, um, well, we had Bitcoin up there, we'll throw that. We can put up the uh, gold chart. 
And I use these continuous contracts. Where are they? A couple more. Okay. Now we got a choice. Uh, so look at the gold, because I will say one other thing I wanted to mention is um, one thing I found about crypto, it will lead and turn before the stock market does. Because this was all, this back here in February was the first bearish divergence. We know where the stock market was back then. And it had a hit, but the Bitcoin started down and then the stock market started down. So I also want to show you, well, let's go to the gold first, because I am still long-term bullish. I think gold's on its way to 2250 to 2400. We've had... For eight minutes. Okay. I got to turn mine on so I know the time. I think gold has the potential, like I said, 2400. Silver, I can see silver going to 40, 35. We'll take out 35, go to 40, because I think it's on its way to 45 and then potentially to 50. And for these words that you hear a lot of pundits put out, it's only transitory. I don't even use that word anymore. We turned bullish on inflation last summer because some of the commodity prices were bottoming. But um, you can see all through 20 of last year, we had that big run up into August and we've had a sell off since. But now the gold is starting to turn up. I was buying gold back at 1300. Most of my clients were as well, gold and silver. When the 1350, 1450 with targets at 17 and 19, setting long-term targets off the weekly charts at 2000. And people said, you're crazy. RSI doesn't work. Well, we went to 2050, 2070 on some of the futures contracts, but the gold has turned up. We went all the way down. We had, Look at all this underneath the range of 60. The highs were at 60. Now we pulled up to here back in January. We were at 1960. This high was 1960. So it was basically a negative. And against these highs, it was lower, which says it's a long-term negative sell signal. Came down, moving averages started down up here on close down at the bottom on the futures to a momentum low of 20, got under 20, got that, this was 24. And we put in a little bullish divergence down here at the bottom. But like I said earlier, if you're seeing bearish divergence and positive reversals, you're in an uptrend. If you're seeing bullish divergence and negatives, it should be rolling over into a downtrend. This is not doing it. And commodity prices are not doing it. Lumber's just on its own. It's going through the, the ceiling here. But you're getting a bullish divergence. You're seeing the moving averages cross first on the RSI. And then secondly, on the close, we're taking out the 60 level. What was a top down here in the RSI basically became a bottom over here right against the support of the 45 period moving. And look at the slope on this nine. And now it's going above 60, which means the intermediate to upside, intermediate acceleration should start to the upside. Uh, real quick, I wanna go through a few markets. It's kind of like doing a daily five on stock charts. Five, 10 minutes to do five charts. Here's the dollar index. And you can see where moving averages were both down. I don't know how to get this off of here. I mean, I can do this maybe, simple grid. No, I don't wanna do that because I might need to pull up the RSI value, but it was coming down from uh, August of last year. I believe I can get, yeah, look at that high. And that's where we started shorting and I started recommending to people to be buying gold and getting short the dollar and long the currencies and start looking at long positions in the commodities coffee, sugar, soybeans, wheat, gasoline, or not gasoline, crude oil. When it got back above 40 and 45, I said, this thing could go to 60, 65, maybe 70. That was one of the last ones to join the parade. But when it started down, you can look and see the RSI didn't go back above the 60 level. 
it was shifting. And we dropped some more and the RSI went down through 50 and through 40. So now we're establishing that 60 and 20. And the RSI went down here to 33 and over here, we were down to 17, we were under 20. So it went from not being able to get above 60 to break in 20. And look at the price action, look at the moving averages. And in here, we started to get a pop, but it didn't stay long above that 60 level for it turned down again. Then it tried it again, couldn't do it. We put another low in. And soon after that, we put a little tight, little bullish divergence in. Market started up, RSI moving average started up, the nine got above the 45, we're here. The range, here's one long-term. This is uh, 90.04. So the do dollar bounced. And I think it was back here in the early May. I said, it looks like a bounce or what some people always called, you know, dead cat bounces. It wasn't going anywhere. I still think you're going to take out the lows of January. You may see the dollar index go to 87, 85. Uh, I talked about coffee. Let's look at that real quick because I know we're running close on time. Two and a half minutes. Two and a half. Well, this will be one of my daily fives in two and a half. Um, coffee is starting to, it made a bottom. It went up, it got above 60, came back down, higher bottom in RSI than we were back at these lows. And I drew a line from down here through this lowest low, which also came in with a very tight bullish divergence along that line connecting the RSI bottoms. It took off. I think this is going to be one of the best trades for the next 12 months. We were looking at this back over here. It was around 105, 103, 105. Here's a bottom at 110. Then all these in here, bottoms were positive reversals. And the latest one we had has taken it from uh, 125 to over 150. Well, look and I at don't, the I, acceleration that's taken place there in the last run up and it's uh -huh. up into the uh, uh, previous high level. So that's really a very uh, bullish looking, it looks like a, what we would call a phase C, phase D type rally. Yeah, and the acceleration factor, initial acceleration, the moving average nine has gotten above the, the not only the 45, but the 60 level. If we look at the weekly, you're seeing the same thing. This is now breaking 60 and the moving average is coming up behind it. Uh, what was the other one? The coffee, the sugar. I think 40, 40 I think coffee's going to 250 or $3 in the next year. Sugar, I think- Beautiful we're looking see, base, by the way. Yeah, and sugar, I think we're gonna see probably 20, 22 cents. And Here's soybeans. 17 now, so that's- Look at this one. Looking. Yeah. I mean, this is why I'm a position trader, not a day trader. If I see something turning and I get in it and I take my profits on a day trade and the next day it gaps up and I'm chasing it, I don't chase markets. I find out where bottoms are, where tops are. Uh, okay. Hey, Andrew, we yeah. are out of time, but we're going to do it again. And I'll also, everybody remember that uh, Andrew is on your daily five on uh, uh Every, every once in a few while weeks every few weeks yeah, yeah. andrew maybe thank you maybe more so, maybe more thank you so much for being here and thank you all we'll see you next time thank take you take care andrew. folks take care folks